Hi, we are in part two of our module four. In module one, we have looked at overview of machine learning, where you can apply machine learning where it has been applied in various real world applications. Now you know what is machine learning. Basically, machine learning refers to a vast set of tools to understand your data. Without data, you don't do machine learning. You know that machine learning problems or tools can be largely categorized into supervised machine learning problems or tools and unsupervised machine learning. In supervised machine learning, you have inputs and output and the objective why you would do or solve a supervised machine learning problems is either for prediction, which means you want to generate outputs given new inputs, or for inference, which means you want to study or to understand the relationships between the inputs and output, or to extract useful insights from your data. The reason why you do unsupervised machine learning is for inference. Like I said, you want to extract useful insights from your data set. If your output is numeric, then it's called a regression problem. If the output is class category, it's called a classification problem. So th this is what we learned in part one of module four. So now part two, the flow of creating and evaluating models. So given data, the first thing you want to do is to split your data set into training data and test data. This is what we call the test train split. So normally we, we, can, we can have 70% of your data here as your training data randomly chosen and the remaining 30% can be as your test data. It doesn't have to be 70, 30, it can be 80, 20, 90, 10, depends on you. So given the training data, you have to build your model using the training process. Once you have your model, you have to evaluate how good is your model, right? So you check your model using your training data, and that is what we call model evaluation. So let's read here. Quantifying the performance of a model, you want to see how good is your model to generate output given the inputs, you must use a measure of model performance that's appropriate to both the original business goal or the problem and the chosen modeling technique. So you have to check your model that it works on the training data first, right? So if you have a classification problem, for example, predicting who would default on loan, you can either use performance measures such as accuracy, precision, and other measures as we will see later. If your problem is predicting revenue lost due to defaulting loan, this is a regression problem, then you can use the usual root mean squared error performance measure. So that is model evaluation. Next, you have to check how good is the model on the test data. Remember, you did not use the test data to build the model. You used the training data to build the model. And this is what we call the model validation. Generation of assurance that the model will work in production or in application as it worked during training. Because the biggest prop cause of model validation failures is not having enough training data to represent the variety of what may later be encountered in production. Okay, remember, you have your data split into two parts randomly. You build your model using the training data. You check the performance. That we, that's what we call model evaluation. After that, you have to do model validation, which means you have to check how good is your model on the test data. Test training splits. So we are talking about this now. When you're building a model to make predictions, you need data to build the model. We call that training set. You also need data to test whether the model makes correct predictions on new data. 
which is what we call the test set. So training set is the data you fit to model building algorithm, either regression, decision tree, or, and so on, so that the algorithm can set the correct parameters to best predict the outcome variable. So training data is what you use to build your model. Test set is the data that you fit into the resulting model to verify that the model's predictions are correct. So this is basically an unseen data set by the model. This is the real performance measure of your machine learning model. So evaluating classification models. Remember, classification models are machine learning models whose output is a category or a class. So when building a model, the first thing to check is if the model even works on the data it was trained from, right? So let's look at an example of classifying email into spam. Spam email is our emails we in no way want and non-spam email that we want. So normally email that you don't want goes to your spam folder and email that you want to receive goes to your inbox. So let's look, let's have a look at the data set. So this is an example of the spam data set. Okay, as you can see, first of all, these are the number of data that you have or number of rows, right? So if I scroll down in your data set, in this data set, we have 4,006. 101 data. How many columns we have? So we have all these columns. So we have 59 columns. Okay. If you notice, this column is, is called spam. This is the header. And the value of this column is spam, 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 and non-spam. Okay, so there are two types of out, uh, values in, in this column, either spam and not spam. Okay, and the rest of the column the rest of the column have some weird labels or names headers so this is word dot frig dot make dot word dot frig dot address and so on so basically these are the features of an email right i'm assuming these are the frequency of the word make that appears in an email okay these are you have about 57 of these features that describes your email so you have 57 Features of emails, one column that describes either it's spam or not spam. So now you can figure out what is the objective of the machine learning problem here. What are the inputs and what is the output? Okay, you should be able to discover or to determine that by just looking at this data set. Now let's go back to our slides. Um, or rather, let's look at my notes here. So, our problem, so we are given a data set. As we saw, we have 4,601 rows. These are the number of data that we have. We have 58, 58 columns, of which the first 57 are our inputs. 
these are the features of our email and we had one column called spam this should be our output so our objective is to build a model right such that in the future when we have this 57 inputs we can produce an output saying either it's spam or non-spam so first of all is this a supervised machine learning problem yes it is supervised machine learning problem because we have inputs and output is this a classification problem yes it's a classification because the output is spam it is a categorical variable and uh, why we are doing this are we doing this for prediction or inference I would say we are doing this for prediction because we want to apply this in the future in our email so that when we get our email assuming the features are extracted by another algorithm we can decide whether the incoming email is spam or not all right the first thing to do as we saw in the flow in the flow chart earlier we have to do test train split where you have to divide your given data set this is the given data set split this into training data and test data randomly so here and for example you can choose 70 30 so 70 percent from 4601 is 3220 and the remaining is 1381 so you have 3220 data here and 1381 data here given your training data you have to build your model so what kind of model we have not discussed yet we'll be discussing in part three so here you can assume for now you have either a set of equations or a set of rules that will generate output spam or not spam given the inputs so once you have your model you have to check how good is your model there are two stages as you remember one is the model evaluation and the next one is model validation so model evaluation is when you give your training data this is your training data but you only give the inputs of course these are the inputs uh, column 1 up to column 57 you give the inputs and you have to generate outputs from your model so let's call the output spam predicted so the output so for example if you give row number one maybe the output could be spam if you give row number two the output could be non-spam this is what generated by your model given given your inputs from training data so you can put this nicely in a new table where you have your original training data from here and add, we've added another column called spam predicted from here right so now you have your actual data actual training output and the predicted output so now we can compare how many times your model is correct and how many times your model is wrong so a simple performance measure is called the accuracy where you just compute how many times is correct for example if it's spam and if this is spam as well then this is correct if the actual output is non-spam and your predicted output is spam this is wrong so you compute how many times your model was correct divide by 3220 so that is your accuracy so normally you would get a high number in model evaluation a high accuracy because your, you train your model using your training data it should give you a high performance next the actual the real test comes in model validation where you take the inputs of your test data this is your test data you did not use this to build your model you take the inputs you give into your model you compute the output again you have a prediction here spam non-spam and so on 
you can put this in a new table where the first part of the table is your original test data added with another column the prediction of your model and again you can do the same you can compare how many times your model is correct divide by 1381 you will get an accuracy so that is model validation let's go back to our slides so you can put those results nicely in a matrix called confusion matrix with a table that summarizes the classifiers predictions against the actual known data categories so you have your true condition this can be let's talk about your model validation a model evaluation so this can be from your um, training data Predicted condition is the output of your model. So positive negative here is your class. So let's assume that spam is positive class and non-spam is your negative class. Okay. So true positive is how many times your prediction is spam or positive class given the actual class is also positive so that is true positive all right so if you if we look back at our notes so true positive is you look at your prediction if your prediction is spam and the actual output is also spam and you compute the number of times you have that spam spam uh, outputs then that is true positive okay on the other hand when your predicted output is non-spam and your actual output is also non-spam you compute in total how many times you get that that is what we call the true negative so p here refers to your positive class true means it is correct positive and positive is correct negative here refers to the negative class and true means it's the prediction is correct and we have two two more categories false positive and false negative so false positive means the output of your model is a positive class but it's wrong right because the actual is negative false negative here means your prediction is negative class which means non spam and the but the actual is positive class so it's wrong that's why we call it false negative So in, in this case, if you look at this, spam is, what is spam? Spam is our positive class, okay? But our, our actual output is non-spam, so this is wrong. So we call this false positive, right? We call this false positive. So there are three ways at least to measure a classifier's performance so if you note that our spam problem is a classification problem we also call it classifier so one of the performance measures is accuracy so what is accuracy defined as the number of items categorized correctly divided by total number of items in other words what fraction of the time the classifier is correct remember I told you earlier in order to compute accuracy you just compute the number of times you got it correct or your output is correct divide by 3220 that is accuracy or from confusion from your confusion uh, matrix it is just true positive plus true negative divide by true positive plus false positive plus true negative plus false negative 
uh, in actual simulation, actual uh, model, this is what we got. So whenever the output is spam, the actual output is also spam 180 times. Whenever my, out, my predicted output is non-spam, the actual output is spam, which is wrong. We have it 18 times and so on. So the accuracy that we got is uh, 0.924. But for spam filter, maybe an error around 8% is unacceptably high. So what this means is that sometimes good email appears in your spam folder and emails that you don't want or spam email appears in your inbox. So it's, it's not always easy to get high accuracy. If you can get high accuracy, it's very good. But if you cannot, probably you can settle down to the other two performance measures, such as precision and recall, which is less strict. The precision is what fraction of the items of the classifier that the classifier flags as being in the class actually are in the class. So in other words, how often a positive indication turns out to be correct. And the formula is true positive over true positive plus false positive. In our actual uh, model, we got 0.914. It means that 8.6% of what was flagged as spam was in fact non-spam. So it's a measure of confirmation. When the classifier indicates positive, how often it is in fact correct. So what it means is that if, first of all, this is less demanding than accuracy because we are only look at look we are only focusing on true positive and false positive so if you get this low right for example if if it is 91.4% what it means is that 8.6% of the time your good email will appear in your spam folder right because your classifier you would say it is spam, but it's actually it's not spam, right? Because the true positive is low and false positive can be high. So this is bad because good emails appear in your spam. Most of the time, probably we don't even check our spam folder. So depending on the application, you want precision to be high. Next, recall. Recall is what fraction the things that are in the class are detected by the classifier. The formula is true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. And in our application, we got 0 0.909. It's also a measure of utility, how much the classifier finds of what there actually is to find. So in our email, if we got recall to be low as such, this is quite low in our in our standards. This means is that what it means is that sometimes or often you would get spam email appearing in your inbox. So it's not so convenient, but it's also not so serious. It's okay to have spam email in your inbox, you just have to delete it, right? On the other hand, as we saw previously in precision, if your precision is low, this is dangerous because good email would appear in your spam folder and you might accidentally delete it. So depending on the application, sometimes you focus on accuracy if it's difficult to get high accuracy, you settle down to either precision or recall, either one. So that was model evaluation. Remember, you build your model using your training data, and then you check the performance, you compute uh, accuracy, for example, 
on the training data itself that is model evaluation it is the performance of the model on the training data our biggest worry is the validity of the model will it show similar quality on new data in production because your model has seen your, the training data that's the data set that you built your model with model validation is testing of a model on new data using our test set so normally you want your model to perform fairly well or equal on both the training data and the test data so let's look at our uh, regression problem this, when, it's, when I say regression problem you should know that our output is numerical so look, let's look at this graph first right um, the gray points are our training data the blue points is our new data the gray line is our model so you should know by now whatever appears on the gray line is the output of our model is our predict predicted output okay so here as you can see the predicted output is exactly the same as our training data which means if you compute a root mean squared error it will be zero which means your evaluation accuracy will be very very high right and when you do model validation which means you check your model on the uh, new data or the test data the error will be huge so this is a phenomenon where we call overfitting which means you build your model you get 100% accuracy or zero error on training data but then when you check your model on test data or new data you will get huge error okay an overfit model looks great on the training data and performs poorly on new data because what happened is that your model has memorized the training data instead of discovering generalizable rules of pattern overfit model is bad because it's more complicated than anything useful as you can see this line is very complicated difficult to describe this using mathematical equation and it's less accurate in production because what matters is how good is your model on new data not on training data the training data is just to help you to build a model what you really want is something like this Okay, a properly fit model will make about the same magnitude of errors on new data as on the training data. Because you have to learn the general pattern in the data. You have to learn, the model has to learn the relationships between inputs and output. Okay. So here you can see, even though the uh, train uh, evaluation accuracy is not very high the validation accuracy is also not high it's okay because you did not overfit and the model has learned the trend in the data this is what we want the data used to build a model is not the best data for testing the model's performance because this data was seen during model construction and model construction is optimizing your performance measure you tend to get exaggerated measures of performance on your training data perform all your clever work on the training data alone and delay measuring your performance with respect to your test data until as late as possible in your project we call this testing on held out data